everyone, I hope you're well. Uh, I know it's been a little while since I've um, shown my face and done a video, but here I am. If you haven't seen any of my videos on my work before, I'm Jo Louise, also known as Felicity and Ink, and I draw a lot of flowers mainly, lots of nature themed bohemian style things, um, and lots of patterns too. Um, if you um, follow me already, you might have already seen that lately I've brought out a new book. Um, I say new, it's the first book I've ever done, but um, it's kind of like step-by-step -step tutorials on how to draw garden flowers. Here it is if you haven't seen it. Um, so it includes 40 flowers as I mentioned. You can follow along at your own pace and you know, take your own time to um, complete whichever flower you like in any order obviously. Um, but yeah, each step is clearly shown which is the new part to draw um, by the new pink areas that appear in each drawn. And there's a little section as well where you can draw your own so you can have everything in one place and see it all. Um, unfortunately, I was a little bit slow with filming this video, so the um, hardback physical copies have actually sold out and they sold out a lot quicker than I expected. So, thank you very much to everyone who did buy one. Um, but I also have a digital version and um, an ebook that is um, instantly downloadable, um, which you can also grab. So it's obviously, it's exactly the same, you just um, print it at home instead and or you can import it or draw an app if you'd rather draw straight on an iPad or anything like that. Um, but yes, that one is still available in my shop, but for today's tutorial today, or you don't have to go buy any of these things obviously. Um, I have a freebie on my website which I'll link down below for the flower we're going to draw today, which is the Hellebore flower. And I thought it might be nice if I showed you step by step as I do it and talk you through it as well to make it a little bit easier to hopefully understand and follow along too. So we're going to look at that one now and I hope you'll join in. The only sort of materials you need obviously is a bit of paper or sketchbook or whatever you like to draw on. Um, I'm going to be using some fine liner pens but you don't have to use fine liners if you don't want to. Um, you could use pencil or biro, um, anything you can find really that you can draw a line with is all good. Um, so yeah, hopefully you'll join along and um, yeah, hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to be using a fine liner that is a 0 0.1 nib, um, but as mentioned, you don't have to use the same equipment at all. Anything that you have lying around that makes a mark. Um, is more than suitable um, so just find whatever you have lying around and use that um, but if you want to use the same as what I'm using that's um, a 0 0.1 fine liner. Okay so step one I've done a little close-up on this step as it is like a really small center of the flower to begin with so because this one's um, a fairly round um, flower I'm going to start it in the center of this area to make sure I have enough room and I'm going to start with the tiny little circle that's at the top of that stem in the middle. And then I'm just going to bring that down like so, close it off at the bottom. And then from that, I'm going to draw a spike coming up from the top there, a spike coming up from this side here, spike coming down from the bottom. Not very good with these descriptive words, we'll call it a spike. Um, it's like a, a mini spiky leaf, I guess. You just arch them towards the way that they're traveling. Just sort of close that all off at the bottom and make sure it's connected. This feels so weird, I'm um, following back the steps that I've already drawn. <laughs> um, it's a good test, I guess, to see if I can make it look the same again. I've never really tried it before, but you know, we're doing this as a first together. <laughs> um, yeah, it's also um, nice to finally drawing this book. Um, yeah, all good. Okay, step number two is where we start to build out from this centre point and that is made up of a lot of, I guess you can call them little wavy curvy lines. <laughs> but again, my descriptive um, words, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so we're just going to draw little half circles, I guess, and connect them back down to the center. We'll start with the first row and go all the way around. Just imagine it's kind of like a circle um, coming out from that center point there. And we're going to go in and add another row on top of that and kind of try and make it um, a little bit unaligned with the row you started with first. So 
if you have the center of one curve below it, try and start the line of the curve on the next line in the center of that curve, if that makes sense. Um, I'm probably overcomplicating this. Um, I would just, yeah, we'll just stick with following the steps. <laughs> okay, and step number three is again, just building on top of that, going around with another row of half circle lines like so. Now you can see we're on to step four already. Okay, so for this one, we need to add some lines like so. So again, I'm just gonna go around, curve them to the way that the circle is flown like so. And then you can go around after you've done your quick strokes and just repeat to thicken the line up a little bit and to make sure they're all around the same length as each other. There we go. And then on top of those, we're just going to add a little circle. And these don't all have to be exactly uniform. As I always say, my favorite thing about drawn flowers is that each one is unique and no two look the same. So you can have fun with it each time and make any tiny little changes to make it look even more organic. Um, yeah, so it's different each time. Okay, so now we're getting into the petals. And I'm going to start from this side here and bring out a curved line like so, curve it up to here. And then from here, I'm going to start the line from this point, curve it up to a point and then round off that point, the top, curve it back down towards the center and then start a new line from this point and bring it all the way back down to the center. Okay, and we will go in with the next one from the bottom. If you have any of these little lines in the way, kind of take it to the point where this becomes the forefront and then continue it from the other side of that. So curve this one all the way back down like so. Start your opposite side, curve that one down and then bring it off to a rounded point. And you can start to add in any little lines um, where you'd imagine the petals would curve here. So as you can see, this one's kind of at the end, so it would curve to a little point. Um, quick, um, fine strokes bring these up a little bit. You can add any other little bits like so. And it, the quicker you do the stroke, sort of the nicer it ends off into a fade. And we can start to add in some little details on the petals here. I really like the details on this flower. I think that's why I chose it for um, this step. So we're just going to Create lots of random dotty shapes. They don't have to be dots, so it's more like little splodges. <laughs> um, all different shapes and sizes. Um, just kind of like fan them out to follow the shape of the petal. And so you kind of have more towards the bottom, towards the center of the flower, and then they kind of fade out a little bit more as you reach the top and you don't have to do the full details just yet this is just to start create a, a basis and um, as we get further on to the last two steps is when we add the bulk of the details so these are just to kind of create a starting point for that detail later on again with this one you can kind of take the lines all the way up like so if you prefer or you can make them totally random and just place them anywhere you like, it's up to you. Like so. Okay, now we're on to step seven and we're going to start bulking out the sides of the flower. So I'm going to start from this point here, bring out the petal like so, 
and then bring it back down and curve it towards the centre. Add in your little petal fold lines. So, and then back to the other side over here. Create a little dip there for that fold. And then just create a really wiggly line. Don't worry about getting it exactly the same, just wave it a little bit. And then add in your lines like so. Make sure that they're always curving back towards the centre. Don't um, do straight lines because that would um, make the petal look less organic and more rigid. We want to try and make it look as soft and as um, flown as possible. So now we're on to step eight, which is adding in the details on these petals. Again, with the little splodges, little circles. Curving them up um, in the same direction as everything else for the flow of the petal. And the other side, the same thing. Again, it's a lot more towards the centre and then they kind of fade up towards the top. You want to go back in and add a bit of length to any of them to make them look even more different from each other. You can go ahead and do that. Kind of makes them look more like I don't know, some kind of animal print maybe. <laughs> happy with those and step nine we're going to add in the last last petal down here which will finish off that part there so we're going to start from here bring it down to a point and then wave the line as I bring it back down to this point here add in your lines for the petal folds and then we're going to add in some leaves too. I'm going to start from here. I'm going to create a leaf. I just wave the pen all the way up to that point. And then we add in the centre vein, start with the middle one, branch it off, and then create a mini branch off that one, branch that one off, and then the same over that side. Um, if you create it so it's not as symmetrical, it makes it look a lot more organic. And then from some of these points, I'm going to drag down a quick line, like so, um, so it kind of fades out a bit. Just again, same as the petal, creates more folds. And I'm going to add in the second leaf down here. Again, just wriggle the pencil, the pen, whatever it is you're using. Just follow the general direction of the line and then wave the, um, the line a bit to create that uneven surface I guess. <laughs> Go in with your centre vein, create a branch off that one, and another branch. Just make it as uneven as possible. And you can mimic sort of some coming from, from the bottom there that are hidden behind that petal. Okay, now step 10, we're going to add in the deals to the last remaining petal. Like so. And we're going to add in some shade and deals to the leaves. And to do this, I just do some really quick strokes. These little details are really what helps to bring the flower to life. Now, it looks like a lot of detail, but it really doesn't take that long. It's all just about 
adding in some darker areas where you think would have more depth. So generally in the center of things like so, um, where it connects to the bottom and um, behind the petal here, um, blend it out like so. Um, the quicker um, the stroke, the more natural it ends up looking. So anywhere where there's lines here, but make sure not to continue it all the way along because you want to create some light and some dark to make the illusion that um, some of the petal or the leaf is in the forefront and it's the most light is bouncing off that. And then anything that's um, kind of behind that fold is where the depth and the darkness is. So you see the difference those um, quick few lines I've made from the rest of it. Um, it just helps to add a, a bit more depth. So we'll do the same down here. We'll add in those lines at the bottom, blend it out along the side of the petal, and then the same going up here. Just a few on here because um, there's a lot of veins, so you don't want to add too much darkness to it. And then the same on those edge folds there, we're just going to add in some quick lines all heading in the same direction towards the bottom of that leaf. Like so. And that is the deal to the leaves added. So now we can go ahead and move on to step 11 and add some more, um, some more spots. So just add them wherever you see any gaps really. And these ones will generally be of a smaller size than the one we've already created. Just concentrate on the um, bottom of the flower mostly, that's where they would most be. And then as you get further up, you can kind of stipple um, the pen a bit just to fade them out. Like so. You can really add as many or as little as you want here. You don't have to do it the same way as I am. If you kind of do a little stipple but drag it out before lifting the pen off the paper, um, that helps to create a, a longer line as well. I think that's enough for that one. Let's go in and do the same for this one. It's quite therapeutic to just dot the pen. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> and super quick strokes towards the top there. And then same here. Repeating this process until they're all done. You don't want one to look unbalanced compared to the rest, so try and kind of add the same amount of detail for each one so it doesn't look um, out of place. And then back over this side. And the quick, fast stops, spreading it out towards the ends there. And last one here. This one I don't think needs as much done. There we go. I think that's about as many as we need. And we're going to go into the last step, step 12, and just add in those um, last bits of details, which helps to lift everything and make all the difference. So I generally leave um, this area untouched and these little dots here. And what we're going to try and do is add in more lines um, to help darken the area that comes out of it to help that um, regain a bit of 
definition and help it stand out a bit more. So just go around the bottom of each petal. Let's add some quick strokes heading up towards the end of the petal or of the curved lines. I'm going to just extend that the center a bit and then from that line here we will add some to that point two. Quick through here. Some around this line here. And then I'll generally add a few longer lines from that point there. Just quick strokes to make them a little bit lighter than the rest. Okay, then I'm going to go in with this one next and do the same. Start from the bottom, add the darkness to help the centre stand out. Just quick organic strokes. And then bring it up the sides a little bit. Drag some lines down from those points that we added earlier. Making them all different lengths will help to make it look more natural. And then go in and add some of those longer, quicker lines. At the bottom. So you see the difference in those two compared to these. It just really helps. Um, everything stand out a little bit more just with those quick strokes. So let's go over this side and do the same thing. Let's bring the sides there. This one's buried behind these ones a little bit so I'd kind of concentrate a little bit more on the, those outer edges. And then I'm going to add some lines here. Again, different lengths will help. And then back down the edges there. You can add in your longer lines. You won't need as longer ones on this one because it's a shorter petal. And then we're going to go over this side, do the same from the center here. And then on the outer edge too. down from this edge to and the other side just a little bit and then again those longer lines if you'd like to add any in okay now on the last one here you see this bit starting to emerge this will be the last piece to help it fully stand out. This will require the most darkness. This area here is it's buried right behind those two petals in front of it. So we need to blend that up all the way along the edge. And then add those lines of the different heights along the edge like so. few longer ones and that's about it. I'd maybe add a tiny bit coming with a couple lines from that centre there just to really add some depth and then you can go in and just block in some shade and right up to the edge. Blend it out a bit there, like so, and there we have the completed Hello Ball. I'm going to say it's um two different from the one I drew last time. So there's a slight variation in the um size of the petals, but yeah, not too not too bad. Um, yeah, I hope um that was easy enough for you to follow. Um, and with the instructions that are. Um, included on my blog in the freebie section. I'll leave the link down below. You can print this out too so you can see it um, in front of you as you're following along as well. Hopefully that helps too. 
So I hope you enjoyed following along with that tutorial. I mean, I hope if you did get to the end, you did actually follow along and draw the flower, but if not, uh, like the video is obviously going to always be here. So feel free to come back and um, join in any time. But if you have drawn something, I'd really, really love to see it. Um, you can share it with me here on um, YouTube, um, or you can find me on Instagram at Felicity and Inc. or use the hashtag Felicity and Inc. Teachers. Um, I always give feedback and obviously reply and share my stories, all that good stuff um, with anyone post that joins in with any of the tu tutorials that I create. Um, it really does make my day to see um, what you create or create that's inspired by anything that I um, sort of show you guys. So that would be really appreciated and I hope you enjoyed it.